what's going on youtube welcome to Estes angling today we're going to be trying out something different which is the pellet cone now i hadn't heard of a pellet cone uh, until one of you guys mentioned it to me the other week They're like westy why don't you do a video on a pellet cone i was like pellet cone what the hell's one of them I've not heard of one before so bought myself some uh, you get a pack of three in there of varying sizes of the cones and you get the baiting tool as well There's other manufacturers that do these not just guru So um, you don't need to buy those ones if you don't want now I'm going to be going through how I'm going to set this up whether this is going to be the right or wrong way of using a pellet cone I'll let you decide but this is how I'm going to set it up. I've had a good think about it So I've ordered a couple of bits of tackle that I didn't have before that I'm going to use So I'm going to run you through those and why I've bought them uh, and why I think they're going to be effective so I'm going to be fishing with my specimen rods today on bite alarms just because it is coming up to Christmas, hence the Christmas hat. We're going to be leaving the rods in probably half an hour, 45 minutes at a time before recasting. So I'm going to need to just sit on my hands and uh, leave the rods as long as possible. So that's my plan for today. This method you definitely can fish on tip. If you wanted to fish using your feeder rods, there's definitely no problem in that whatsoever. But enjoy the video. Hopefully we catch a few for you and we'll, uh, we'll see how effective this method is. Right folks, let's tie our first pellet cone rig up. So I've had the method feeders on these pre-set up rods, so I'm just going to take them off. And I've ordered off eBay some of these 1.1 ounce leads they're tiny but they're still heavy enough that the fish is going to have the opportunity to self hook so um, you need a little bit of setting weight but they're perfect 1.1 ounce you can cast those out on a feeder rod or you can use specimen rods like I'm using today like I've said so they just thread on now you'll have to play about with this at home if you're using different brands of uh, weights but the hole in the bottom a size 11 quick change swivel fits perfectly into the bottom of them and again I've just got these off eBay just normal size 11 swivels now you need a quick change swivel and I'll show you why in a, in a little while it's all part of this pellet cone rig that you're going to need to be able to use a quick change if you've got a Preston Innovations bomb um, you can use the quick change beads uh, that are attached to those and they'll work perfectly as well I just don't particularly like the Preston Innovations bombs I just think they're too square and bulky so that's why we're using these, they're a little bit more subtle, they're very low profile and that's what we want. Especially at this time of year we don't want anything too big and bulky. So I'm just going to tie these on, um, I'm going to make a loop, thread it through the eye of that uh, quick change swivel. Then make another loop around it, now this is a very very strong knot. And this is 10 pound main line. So that's all I'm doing. So I've made a loop within a loop, and then I'm just gonna pass that quick change swivel through that loop, wet me knot down, and then ease that other loop over there, and there you go. So that is a very strong knot, and that is not gonna break. Usually the main line will break before that knot will break. But we're gonna be using a lighter hook link than 10 pound obviously uh, I'm going to be using a 7 pound hook link Guru Engage which I've already pre-tied up so we'll get a couple of those out fishing with two specimen rods today tied some longer and some shorter um, just in case we did a, get a breakage or something like that I wanted a couple of extras these are a bit longer than a method feeder rig so if we measure that up against there so that's about five inches what I'll do is I'll put a link in the top right hand corner to my method feeder rig video but this has got a slight change to it I've just made a twizzle boom section at the end there just to help kick this rig away from the lead on the cast so it's just going to make it a little bit more tangle free so if you can see that I've probably got an inch there a twizzle boom section it just makes it a little bit stiffer and it's just going to kick it away from that lead as you'll see in a second. So I'm going to pull that lead down into there. Now that's snug but it's not tight so on a take that's going to come out. So if you see that 
size 11, quick change swivel, it's going to pin the hook link in, but on a take, um, when a cart bolts or a bream bolts, it's just going to come out and then that, that lead's going to slide up and down the line and it's not going to interfere and the fish isn't going to be able to throw the bait um, on the take. All I'm going to do now is we're just going to thread our hook link on so I can show you how this works. Loop goes over there, just pulls in gently and that isn't going to come out when you're playing a fish because the tension's going to be towards uh, the fish and the other end towards the rod. So you're not going to be pulling it sideways so it isn't going to un unhook. And you just pull that in snugly into the, uh, the little bomb there and there you go. That's it. Now obviously with your pellet cone you squeeze pellets tight into this cone. I'm going to add a little bit of attractant as well just to help bind everything together. I'm going to do a couple of tests because the only thing I'm worried about with this kind of rig is are the pellets going to break down on the cast? Ideally you want them on the bottom around your hook bait. Now I've got a feeling that they're just going to explode as soon as the lead hits the water but we'll see. We'll do a quick test. We'll throw one hard into the margins and see whether it breaks up. But that's how you use it. So what you do is I will show you in a minute this when we've got uh, a pellet cone made up but you just thread your baiting needle through the made up cone with the pellets and then you pull that down your hook link and then hook your hook into the top of the pellets with your um, whatever hook bait that you choose on the end but I'll go through that with you in a minute. So that's one of the rods set up, nice quick easy set up, let's get the other one done and then we'll mix some pellets up. Right folks, let's get these pellets made up. So I'm opting for a, a nice sweet flavour today for the pellets. I'm not going to be mixing many up, so I'm probably just going to mix them in this tub. Empty them casters out. And I've just got some Fin Perfect sticky method pellets there, but you can use any kind of pellets. Normal coarse fishery pellets just take a little bit longer to um, absorb the water. That's all. So that's all I'm going to make today. I'm not going mad with them, and I'll save the rest. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some of this um, pineapple goo in, which is corda, just to give it a little bit of extra flavour and colour. So give them a good coating and I think this will just help bind all the pellets together as well. Then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cover them in water. Give them a right good mix up there and they'll absorb all that flavour in. So I'm going to leave them probably three or four minutes in there and this should be perfect. They should have absorbed a lot of that water. If there's any excess water, I'll just tip it out. But you'll be surprised at how much they actually absorb. Let's have a look at our little pellet cone set without dropping them in the water. So you just get a little baiting needle and three cones. <laughs> Not much for five quid really, is it? <laughs> but there you go. So you've got varying sizes depending on how much bait you want to put out. But I'll probably go with the medium size one for today's session. And I'll put them other ones somewhere safe in my tackle bag. I think this will be a really effective method in the summer in the margins. Um, we're at high haze today and it's quite a tough venue. Um, you never catch absolutely loads of fish, but you've got a good chance of a different variety. Um, they have pretty much every coarse fish in these waters. So um, you get a good choice. The carp never feed mega heavy here, but if you do get a carp, it tends to be, you know, a double figure carp. So my dad's fishing with me today. We've both got our Christmas hats on in the festive spirit. <laughs> Let's mix that up. Still need a couple more minutes then. I want them nice and soft so they bind together in this cone. They're not going to absorb the water very quickly because it's winter. In the hotter weather the pellets tend to take on the water a little bit better. So all you do when it comes down to it, 
is you'll take your hook link off then you'll make your cone up pop it out put your um, your loading needle through the cone hook this then on the uh, loop side of your uh, your rig and then thread the cone all the way down so the bait that we're going to be using today is pink wafters you know that these are my favorite bait and that's what we're going to be using on the pellet cone because i know that we're going to have our best chance of getting a fish today on those obviously we've had about three inch of ice on the water <laughs> over the last week or so so the water temperature is going to be very cold and that's a nice visual bait that's hopefully going to snag us a fish or two today and we're getting on that water's absorbing my fingers are going to be yellow at the end of today i think yeah they just need a they just need a little bit more time they're not binding together yet i'm going to give them 10 15 minutes and we'll come back to them while those pellets are absorbing that water i'll talk you through the rest of my gear um if you're following the channel you'll be familiar with the rods that i use which are these gray's prodigy tx uh, one and a quarter test curve 12 foot specimen rods and then shimano dl 6000 reels and that's loaded with 10 pound line like i said for my hook length material i use guru engage so that's 12 pound i've used seven pound today i've got a variety of different uh breaking strains of that these uh pellets just aren't absorbing this water you know so the idea is that you just squish these pellets tight into the cone and then just pop it out so there you go it'll be like that but the pellets need to be a little bit softer than they are at the minute um now i'm struggling with making them soft because it's winter and they're not absorbing the water very quickly could have done with soaking them overnight maybe that's something to do guys if you're using this method soak your pellets overnight so squish that in tight and there you go that's your little pellet cone and then you thread your baiting needle through that and then down your hook link dead simple but problem is on the cast i think they'll break up Look, if I throw this in the margins, gently, it's all broke up on the way down. So how's that gonna work on the cast? So that's the only reason that I can see why this method won't work. But we will see. I'm just trying it out for you. Like I said, I've had a good few requests about it and I haven't bloody heard of them. If it's not a method for you, I'm not interested. <laughs> My dad's not had anything yet. He's fishing method feeders and his specimen rods as well. Uh, but yeah, looking forward to trying it out. It's good to try a little new technique. But like I said, I think this will be great in summer, just sitting a little weight like this 1.1 ounce, just in the margins. And then you've got your pellet cone and your hook bait sitting as a perfect little parcel of bait in the margins. Yeah, I think it'll be awesome. It's a bit less obtrusive than a method feeder so that might be one to try in summer as my dad casting out i'm going to be casting one midway and one a little bit closer to that reed bed on the opposite bank me and my dad are the only two people on this particular lake today they do have some big f1s in here but they're few and far between and i mean big f1s like up to five pound so hopefully we get one of them if these pellets eventually start absorbing some of this uh, liquid <laughs> we might be able to get fishing come on i want to show you all this because this is all part of it you know what i mean it's all something to consider i would have been fishing by now if i were fishing the method feeder so that's why i'm saying it's probably worth soaking them overnight i don't know whether to put a touch more water in well we'll try that We'll try that like i said my fingers are going to get yellow today because of that um pineapple goo well <laughs> i've just stopped the video there uh, another subscriber come over and had a chat with me so that's the second one i've seen on the bank so far of you guys right 
so that'll be right that let's go with it I'm gonna go small end going downwards we'll just hook that on our hook link I've took it out the quick change swivel and then just gently thread that through I'm gonna squeeze it in a little bit tighter so you can see all those pellets have molded together now and that's what you want essentially push that hook in gently and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to press that out and there we go it's breaking up slightly already it's a bit of a faff this technique I'm not going to lie and then what I want to do is up that back through have a quick change pull it down and in So our hook's buried in the bottom of the pellets there. You see that? So that's how it should look. Like I said, I think this is going to explode on the cast. But we'll see. So I'm just going to give it just one more gentle squeeze. Hopefully it stays together. I need to do a nice gentle cast. I might even underarm it. Look at that, it looks perfect. So those small leads are ideal very unobtrusive like i said slightly longer hook link than a method feeder so it just stays away from that lead watch this come straight off on the cast <laughs> i'm just going to do a gentle lob Whew, that bombs right down so all them pellets have definitely come off there Definitely a little bit more stealthy than a method feeder, but like I said, I think I don't think any of them pellets will be around that anymore. But who knows? Who knows? Right, let's get our next one on and out. You've got you've got you've got ground bay in your Christmas ads. <laughs> Uh, they do. Warm, don't they? Yeah, they are. they're really warm hats. Not as good as West's angling hats though, so. And I've still got some of them left if anybody uh, wants to buy one. <laughs> oh dear. Not had anything yet. I've set a timer on me, uh, me Apple Watch. I usually set it for about 40 minutes in winter. And when that goes off, I'll usually give it a quick recast or I'll leave it another five minutes and give it a recast. But yeah, absolutely lovely day. Sun shining. We're on the third lake as you come in to High Haze. I'll put the address for High Haze in the description for you, like I always do if you fancy giving it a go. Uh, but if we don't catch today, you probably won't want to give it a go. <laughs> but we'll see. It is a difficult venue to fish. Um, you never catch loads. But, like I say, if you do catch something, there's a good variety. And um, if you do get a carp, it tends to be a bigger one. So, there's positives to it. There's some really good perch in here if you wanted to come and fish here on maggots and worms. But, yeah, it is difficult. But, we like the challenge. And if the pellet cone method works here, then it'll work anywhere. Just had a bit of a bleep on this left hand rod. But I'm in on a pellet cone guys, over to the reeds. Ah, well I thought I was. Oh. Maybe I should have left it that a little bit longer. So I'm gonna run with this pellet cone method until about 11 o'clock. If we've not caught by 11, I'm going to swap on to a uh, fishing float for you, just so we catch a few. I've got some maggots with me. Always bring maggots at this time of year. If you're not catching on the feeder... Oh, a bit of a bleep then. So, if you're not catching on the feeder or whatever other method that you're using, you can always swap on to float, fish for smaller fish, and at least you know you're going to get a few. And it'll just keep yourself entertained. Or what I might do is just take one of these pellet cone rods out, have the other one still fishing, and fish float with my other one. So I've got that one on like a sleeper, just out of the way. 
and I can fish float down here just out and uh, maybe try for a big perch or something like that. So that's the plan for today and like I said hopefully we get a few for you. Merry Christmas because this is going to be my Christmas Day upload. And I just want to say thanks to everybody that's already subscribed to the channel. Um, it's been absolutely awesome engaging with you all this year. The channel's grown really quickly. I only started it in March last year and I've got, I don't know, um, probably a few hundred away from 2,000 subscribers already. Um, so thanks to everybody for your support. Met some awesome people along the way already. And if you do see me on the bank, don't be scared to come and say hello. A couple of bleeps on both rods. So there must be fish moving about, which is a good sign. Um, I was talking to my subscriber before and he said he's been down to Wrightington today and it's still frozen over. Um, obviously we didn't do any fishing last week uh, because everywhere was just solid with ice. But um, we managed to get out this week. These lakes are free, they're quite big and they're quite deep. So that's probably what's uh, kept them thawed out. Yeah. Fingers crossed we get one of these big F1s. Okay folks, so I've not had anything on that first cast. The rods were in about an hour, so I'm just going to recast again. I've already cast this first rod out, but the pellets are a lot better now. Can you see how uh, they're all bound together and they've kind of lost a lot of the form, but when they're on the bottom of the lake bed, um, they will start to break up. Okay, so I'll show you how we load it up again on the next cast. But I'm going to say that nine times out of ten, this is going to break off on the cast. So do I rate this method? Probably not. I don't think it's going to be as effective as a method feeder. So you might as well use the technique that's going to be more effective. Where this technique is going to come into its own is in the margins in summer. Where you can just lower it in and it's going to break down on the bottom. And a carp's going to come in and take that mouthful of pellets and the wafter at the same time so that would be my advice now if I don't get anything on this next cast I will be swapping over to float because I do want to catch something for you guys at the end of the day I'm not selling these products I'm here to catch fish so let's see how we get on, on this next cast and I'll go, go on to float Right, let me show you again how I'll load these up. Okay, so even, I've, even though I've put that sticky goo in, they are binding together, but if you even just drop them in the margins, it all just breaks apart. So you squeeze it in really tight. Put your baiting needle through, front to back. What I do is I'll just give it a little bit more of a squeeze there just to bind it around that baiting needle. You want to take your rig off. And you want to thread it through the loop. Gently ease that through and then pull your hook inside the pellet cone. Give it one more little squeeze just to bind it around your hook link and then just push it out gently. And there you go. Now we want to be about midway again perfect make sure you sink your line I've got a nice tight drag on that bait runner that'll help with the hooking so they're both out now uh, while they're fishing what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my float rod up for you now like I said I'm not a professional I'm not here to sell these products to you I'm trying out different techniques for you all uh, that you've obviously asked me to try but the main thing is I want to catch some fish for you um, otherwise it's going to be a boring video so what I will do is in about 40 minutes if we've not had anything on these I'm going to take one of the rods out and I'm going to fish float here I'm going to still leave one of them in on the pellet cone but I'm going to get a few fish because we're for fishing at the end of the day we're not here to sell these products like I said I'm not a fan of these 
in terms of casting them out i think they'll work much better in summer so if you want to take something away from this video is that i don't think these are going to stay on on the cast so summer margin fishing with a small lead setup like i've done today these will be killer and i'll definitely be using them i'm going to get my float rod set up for you now guys and uh we'll see if we can catch something on the maggots have you had anything yet no indications or anything any bleeps on the buzzers? Nothing. Oh dear. Are you fishing prawn on both? No, I've got uh, prawn on this right hand. Maybe just over a third of the way out. Yeah. Uh, six mil pink lobster on that left hand rod. Okay. Do you not get anything under this tree here with prawn? No. No, no indications or anything. Just check that the hook's still sharp after being in uh, set up in the bag. Right. Let's see how deep we are here under this tree. Probably fishing about not far out. Bit of a bleep there. Oh. So I'll be fishing just over depth there. See what it is a little bit further out. That needs to come a little bit shallower. That's probably not bad actually. Keep it at that for now. Rest on. When I'm fishing with a float I don't use these I just uh, put my rod butt on here put this on without falling in I'm dropping it in the water I've done that before now there we go awesome so that's that set up ready to go see if it'll break up on the drop yeah can you see most of the pellets come off when it hits the water and I didn't throw that in hard so if you can imagine that on a cast they're all just gonna come off so I think if you're using this technique guys you want to be closer in the margins that's the only way it's gonna work but at least uh, I found that out for you. That's even with the pineapple goo holding them together as well. So my dad's fishing method feeders, like I said. We knew it was going to be tough fishing today. One with it being high haze and the other with it being frozen over the last week. But like I say, you've got to be in it to win it. And uh, I think this is going to be our way of catching today. So let's do it I'm gonna recast the left hand rod towards the middle and we'll just leave that probably for the rest of the day let's really squeeze these in could try this with a slightly longer hook length a bit more like a feeder rig but I think it's still gonna be the same and at least using it this way you're gonna get a bolt effect with a nice short rig probably could do anything up to about eight inches and you'd be fine Midway guys, midway. Perfect. Now we're just gonna leave that. 
I'm gonna leave that in over an hour. Float rod, let's do it. Probably put you on the big camera as well. Stuck on everything here. Bloody hell. Fishing problems. Oh my god, what am I doing? Right. Got a couple of little switches. Hopefully you can see the float on the big camera there. I'm just gonna bring it up in the water a touch. So just need to move this shot down. This is the one thing I don't like about float fishing. It can be fiddly. But it's a very, very effective winter technique. And one that you should always have in your arsenal. If you're going out in winter and you just want to be catching, you need to take your float rod with you. So we've come up about six inch there. There's always a chance of getting something on the drop when you're just recasting like this. I've just got them maggots falling slowly through the water. A couple of very light shot closer to the hook. Probably about six inch away from the hook. Spilt my maggots all over the floor, as you do. want a constant stream of maggots going in can't really overfeed with maggots again I might need to be even higher up in the water because what might have happened then is I got a bite when I was feeding some maggots which a fish might have caught the line going for the maggots higher up in the water you know that's the possibility so I can always shorten my hook length. That was a definite bit of a nibble then. Well, we've saved the blank. Small eyed. Very welcome today. Awesome little fish. Definitely getting better indications now I'm fishing up in the water. It's amazing how such small changes can make a difference. Yep, 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 yep. Go on, go on, go on, go on. Yeah. What's this? Is that another ride? I'm going to swing this, guys. It's too small to net. Lovely. They're the kind of size that'll be grabbing it and I'll be missing them. I'm using a size 16 hook. Go on, take it. There we go. Ah, I missed it. <laughs> My subscriber Steve's fishing down the bottom end over there. He's just had a fish up method feeder. My dad's fishing method feeders, he's not had anything yet. Ooh. How am I missing these fish? Good bites. I've got a sensitive float, but it must be small eyed. That's the only reason I can think that I'm uh, missing them. Just need a little bit of a bigger eye to come along and uh, we'll be in. I think there are some decent eyed in here as well, like a good couple of pound. Here we go. Missed it. Okay. It is frustrating when you're fishing float and you keep missing them like that, but usually it just means that they're smaller fish. So if you keep feeding the maggots, eventually you're going to get through the smaller fish. 
and uh, some bigger fish probably move into the swim. Right, okay folks, so I've stopped my battery and I've put you onto the big camera. Let's see if we can get a few more of these eyed. Try maggots. So hopefully they've not moved out of the swim while I was changing the battery. When you get them competing over the maggots, it gets pretty easy to get a bite. Obviously there's a lot of small fish in that, but keep trickling these maggots in. If you want to see this vlog guys, it's, it's bobbing away like there's no smoke. Just a little wide, I think, just pinching at the maggots. Now what I could try, I've got in my bag, is a little section of worm. Which would obviously stop me getting pested by the smaller ride. That might be the right thing to do. for a slightly bigger hook bait. Keep dropping them in, the fish just build up that bit of extra confidence and you tend to get bites a little bit quicker. There will be smaller fish there. Tell you what, they're lovely and warm these Christmas hats. Yeah, 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 come on. See, I could scale down, I could scale down the hook, I could scale down the hook length, but you know, I'd only be catching the tiny eyed, and I don't, I'm not really interested in catching them. I'd rather. I'd rather miss the bites until I get a better fish. Slightly better hide that and come at it. There we go, let's come out and net the hook. If I was fishing the method feeders today, I'm, I'm confident I would have caught um, more than I have done today. My advice to you guys is through the winter. 
um, stick to the method feeders if you haven't seen my uh, method feeder in winter video I'll put a link up in the top right hand corner for you now but it's definitely the best technique at this time of year find the deepest part and you want to be leaving your method feeders in probably 45 minutes to an hour at this time of year but that is by far the best method unless you want to sit and catch small eyes like this in which case use maggots on the float I'll put my bait runner on and I'll go and see what he's caught a few of you are asking why I use a little bait runner on that rod and this is the reason when I'm filming what is it dad? is that on the maggots? So you just put maggots on the uh, the method feeder and you've got a bite, you've not had anything all day. Yeah. Let's have a quick look at it. Five. I put five maggots. <laughs> it's a nice bream that. Right, I'm gonna need to go back to my rod. Ooh. <laughs> not your sure dad, it's mine, so That's a better one. Not, not much better, I like, but. Okay, folks, so I'm going to call it a day there and get packed up. I'm sorry we've not caught many fish today, uh, but at least we've not blanked. And I hope it's given you a good insight into the pellet cone and uh, you can decide whether you want to use that method or not yourself. Uh, to summarize, I think it would be better in summer, as I've said, or if you're not casting very far, maybe if you're just doing a gentle underarm lob or something like that. I don't think it's very good for casting out, even with a small lead like I've been using today. I've not had anything on that particular method. My dad's been fishing the method feeders and he's had one decent bream. And my subscriber Steve, who's down the bottom end there, he's had a carp on the method feeders and pink wafters today. So the method feeder has been a better technique, even if it is only a couple of fish extra. I have had a bit of a run on the uh, the pellet cone today but i didn't hook into anything it's probably a small bream or something like that i probably won't be posting another video now till after new year so i wish you all a merry christmas and a happy new year as well and we'll see you in the next westies angling